Now, welcome to part 10 of our remake of the uh, play Kids Can Code Shoot 'em Up. Today we're working with Lua and uh, Love 2D and we're dealing with uh, power ups. So I've put this on to a um, debug mode so that I can show you what we're doing here. So at the moment we are firing single shots and every so often when the mob is destroyed it drops a shield or a lightning bolt. The lightning bolts give us double guns for five seconds. As you can see they're gone now. So we can get a shield and a lightning bolt. Now because we're in debug mode these power-ups are falling at far greater rate than they normally would. Uh, the, these are on a, a pretty much almost every hit, but on, on non-debug mode you get a 1 in 10 chance of a power-up being dropped. So that's what we're aiming to do today and uh, we'll show you how that all works. Uh, so firstly we've got some changes in the player class. Uh, last time around when we were doing lives we added the lives the hidden and the hide timer now we're adding a power and a power timer so that uh, we can deal with uh, the ability to fire two missiles at once uh, so we've got a new function here which is player dot power up so what we're doing is changing the player power by increasing it by one and we're resetting the power timer to zero. So power timer is zero at the very start and our power is one. During the update function, uh, if you remember we were checking whether we were hidden last time, now we're checking whether the um, power timer is greater than five. So uh, this updates uh, every frame anyway that we're not checking as we were before whether the player was hidden or not. We could have even done the same with the hide timer. It's, it could be cut out of there and put in with the um, power timer. It, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. But uh, So we're checking to whether the power timer is, is going up and once it reaches 5 seconds then the player power is returned to 1 which is its normal state. Um, so that when um, externally from this class when we're playing the, the main loop that can increase our um, power by calling the um, the power up function here which would uh, increase it by one. So that's how that one works. Uh, let's go back to the uh, actually we'll do the, the power up class itself next. So this is very similar to the mob class in that we're creating um, a graphic which falls from the top of the screen vertically down till it hits the bottom and the player can intercept it. It's ignored by bullets. So uh, what we're doing here is we're creating a um, we're sending up a, a list of two images. One of the images is the shield one and the other one is that lightning strike one. So we're, they're called shield and gun. Uh, so we're um, sending up those two lists and then the center of the mob that we're going to spawn it from. Uh, so we choose randomly between the two images that we've sent up by using this um, little routine here um, and then we've uh, once we've chosen either the shield or the gun, we set the type to that format, either shield or gun. Um, and then the image is set to that type. So the image that we use is kind of randomly chosen between the gun or the shield uh, image there. Um, speed wire set to 400, so it's a, a little slower. It gives us a chance to catch it. Uh, I've dropped it even further in debug mode so that um, we've got a much much better chance of catching it and then as before we've got an active flag and then a rectangle and a circle. 
So these are used for uh, collisions. Uh, we can return the circle or rectangle if we want them. In the update of the power up, we're just updating its position in the y direction. So we're only dropping from the top down to the bottom by the rate of delta time. We're also doing the same with a circle, um, so that's following the rectangle. Uh, if they've gone off the bottom of the screen, then the active is set to false, and then they can be uh, destroyed. In the draw, very simple, we're just drawing the image at the rectangle's position. Simple as that. If the debug is on, then obviously you can draw the red rectangle uh, or we could draw the circle which or both whichever you prefer but uh, for the time being I've just left it like that so that's the power up very very similar to the mob class in that we're just drawing a simple sprite that drops from the top of the screen to the bottom it's actually simpler than the mob because it's not going to the right and left it's just going uh, straight down so how is this all used well in main let's go first of all to the load here so there's no changes to what's being loaded in uh, the uh, only changes in the images ones so if we go to load no audio is the same load images here we go so we've introduced a new sprites uh, sub table which is sprites.powerups so an empty table in sprites.powerups that's the meteors that we were doing before, no, nothing new there. And here we're doing sprites.powerups.shield is this new image with the image shield gold PNG and bolt gold PNG. Now these are both available in the Kenny Art Pack uh, Space Shooter Redux in the PNG folder and in the Power Ups folder there where you've got bolt gold there and uh, shield gold there i mean obviously choose whatever you like that was just the ones that uh, were recommended in the original um, tutorial so those are in the which is linked in the uh, repository so you can get those quite easily uh, so that loads in the uh, images and then the way they're generated is when the uh, oh, there's a, a new table here of power-ups added to the sort of general thing here. Uh, these are generated from when we're checking the mob bullet collisions. So what happens with this is the same, we're checking whether the bullet has hit the mob, doing the music and so on. And then here we've got um, uh, a local power up is math random so it just chooses a random value between 0 and 1 so if that value is greater than 0 0.9 in other words there's a 1 in 10 chance of that happening then we're going to create a new power up uh, this one is if the beat debug is on then the power up is greater than 0 0.1 so that gives us a, a 9 in 10 chance of generating a power up when we're in debug mode uh, so we're inserting into our power-ups table a new power-up using the power-up sprites and then passing in again because of the if you look at the curly braces here we're passing in a table value of the x and y positions so we've set it there to the um, the mobs center and the top of the center as well so that it it gives it a little bit um, more time to fall down if it's generated at the very top of a mob rather than in the centre. It just gives it a little bit more time to be generated and dropped. So that's how the um, power-ups are generated. Then of course we need to now check with our player. So there's a brand new routine that's been set up here which is the check power-up player collisions which is fairly similar to the check mob player collisions except we're checking a friendly rather than a mob. So again, we're going through the list of power-ups. We're checking whether it intersects. I'm using circle, you could use rectangle. Uh, we stop the uh, shooting sounds. Uh, and then we check the type of the power-up that we've 
come across. So if it's a shield type, then we just increase the player's shield by a random amount between 10 and 30. We'll play a little shield song, and then if that's greater than 100, we set the shield back to the maximum of 100. Uh, if the power-up is type gun, then we call the player dot power-up, which changes our power-up power up value from 1 to 2. And then we have a special sound that we can play to signify that as well. Um, we remove any power-ups that have been um, intersected with the player. Uh, then um, if, if they aren't intersecting with the player, then we um, check whether we can update it and if not, remove it. So th that's how the excess power-ups are removed. Uh, we're checking the numbers of them and we break out of the loop if there's none left. So that's how we uh, we check whether the power-ups are coming down, whether the players run into them. If we run into it and it's um, a bullet, we um, are allowed then to fire two. And this is how this one works. So in the shoot function, we're now checking, um, are we allowed to fire a new bullet? Yes, we are. Is the player hidden? No, if the player's not hidden, then we can shoot. So we stop the sound. And then we check what the player power is. If it's one, then we, we insert, as we did before, a new bullet into the bullet list. Um, if the power, player's power is two or more, then we insert two bullets. And this time we're passing in a direction, either left or right. So I've done it slightly differently here on the Lua version, in that the Pi game, we, um, we chose the left or right hand side of the rectangle and passed that in as the coordinates. Whereas this time I've passed the player in and chosen either a left or right. So this is just an alternative way of doing things, just to show that there are there's no just one fixed way of doing anything. And then in the power up, it uh, sorry in the bullet itself, we just show you the bullet. There we are. That's right. Increase that. We've got a new bullets player sprite position, and that's um, now choosing whether we're doing left or right and if it's uh, uh, left we use the player's left rectangle and if it's right we use the player's right rectangle so it's kind of we're doing the same thing but by a different method we're passing in the player and then we're choosing a left or a right whereas on the pi game version uh, we just passed in the uh, um, the sprite uh, and um, chose the x and y position when we were passing it in. So we would pass X, Y and uh, the sprite. So uh, different way of doing it, but comes up with the same uh, end result. So that's the uh, power up class. That's the main lure. That's the shoot. Uh, the updates, we've now got obviously a new check power up player collisions in here so that um, we can check whether we're uh, colliding with a power up and then in the draw function we've now got uh, the list of power ups drawing in the same way as we do with the explosions the mobs the bullets so that's how that all works in uh, in Lua so that's the Lua and Love 2D version and uh, we're coming I think to the last part next which will be like everything tied together tidied up and uh, all working with um, with a leaderboard and um, like a pause menu and all, all that kind of thing that's all in on the final final one